Okay, but uh, I mean, if I could quote from your Wall Street Journal article that you wrote, uh, plugging your book, you said, okay. "No, this was being you're being sarcastic." You said, "I took America to war in Iraq. It was all me." Yes. Okay. So obviously, <laughs> a lot of people didn't know that was sarcasm. <laughs> Seriously? Seriously, I wow. got a lot of people saying thank you for finally, finally acknowledging. Wow. And and I and I said, well, that's you know, powerful, stupid. It really because, is. Yeah, that <laughs> that's <laughs> extremely <laughs> stupid. And it, I always say it's a stupid country, but they never cease to shock me. <laughs> Uh, well, okay. I didn't want to hog the credit. I wanted to right. give a little to the president of the United States. But uh, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, okay. But um, here, here's here's what you also said, and this is also you're being sarcastic. Well, okay. You say I had some help from a duplicious vice president, mm. Dick Cheney. There was George W. Bush, a gullible president who wanted to avenge his father. Then you say, and don't forget the neoconservatives who cherry-picked intelligence about Iraq's weapons of mass destruction and fed it to reporters like me. And then you say, none of these assertions happens to be true. Right. The reason I might have some trouble with your credibility is that I think all these assertions are true. <laughs> I think Dick Cheney is duplicious. <laughs> I think George Bush is gullible. I think he was trying to avenge his father. I think neocons did cherry pick intelligence. Why should I believe you if I don't believe any of these assertions? Because the information they got from the intelligence community as opposed to those who wanted to go to war, every administration has hawks and doves or hawks and pragmatists. But the information they got was with high confidence that Saddam Hussein had biological and chemical weapons and moderate conf confidence that he did not yet have a nuclear weapon. Now, if you're the president or the vice president in charge of securing the country after 9-11 and you've had an anthrax attack that has killed people and shut down post offices. Not by Iraq. No, no, no. But if you've had all that and you're responsible for the country and your intelligence community says, hey, this guy, really bad, 17 UN resolutions complaining about his lack of candor and his lack of com complying with the promises uh, yeah, he made, I mean, you're going to believe we, that. We all know he's a bad guy, but the world is full of bad guys. But, right. I, I, but I mean, not all with WMD. Which, of course, he didn't have. <laughs> <laughs> You've made that point for me. Um, I think and, the soldiers I was covering made that point for yeah, me. Yeah, of course. But, and, and, and look, I, I take your point when you say you were singled out. That's true. There, you were hardly the only one. First of all, you had editors who printed your stories. They had the final say. You had bylines that you shared with other people. And somehow, you're the only one in the picture. So I'm sympathetic to that. What I'm not so sympathetic to is the idea that nobody else was saying we shouldn't go to war. I oh, people, many people were saying it. And there were many, many articles about the people who didn't want to go to war and why they didn't want to go to war. But that wasn't what I was responsible for com covering. I, I really believe that there were a lot of people who felt even if Saddam Hussein had WMD, we shouldn't go to war. And there were but debates about that. In hindsight, would you have been more skeptical about it? I couldn't have been more skeptical. Really? I was more skeptical. I, every time I got information that contradicted something we had reported, I went back and did a, a second story, or sometimes a but third But those story. articles in the New York Times mm -hmm. did scare a lot of people. Well, For good reason. Let, right. let, me, let me quote one thing you wrote. You said, Iraq could try to disperse the biological agents by using aircraft or unmanned drones. The germs could be dropped in a bomb or sprayed in the air. Finally, uh, biological agents could be delivered against civilian targets by Iraqi agents. Yeah, all that could happen. Monkeys right. could fly out my butt, but you know. <laughs> to say, but that at, a, at that moment, it scared people. And of course, there's a special place where the New York Times has in this, which is, you know, for liberals, the New York Times, this is the place that was Nixon's nemesis. It printed the Pentagon Papers. So when they say something like this, it carries a different weight. Look, you, under, you appreciate that. Abs absolutely, but he, first of all, the New York Times was not alone. Almost every paper in the country right. was reporting this and network. But beyond that, this information was coming from the men and women who had gotten Osama bin Laden right, 
who understood that the country was vulnerable to a biological weapons attack, I was relying on those same sources. They had never lied to me. They were usually right. We had lots of qualifiers in the story. But how can we not tell the American people the information that but, the president well, is getting? That's the information he was making but his decision What I would say to about. this is that one of the, one of, to me, one of the mm -hmm. m most fundamental flaws of this great country, great, oh yes, I'm saying it's a great country, but it has this military-industrial complex. Eisenhower talked about it. He was so right. They always want to go to war. It's one reason why we've been to war for a vast majority of our history. We're always in it with somebody. And we kind of depend on the fourth estate to call bullshit on the military-industrial complex because they are always <laughs> trying to do this. But that, that's true. But there are also people who are not warmongers like Hillary Clinton and the people who read She's the a intelligence. Hawk. Oh, She's almost, a hawk. There, were, there was an overwhelming vote in the Congress for right. this. And Democrats believe this intelligence too, including John Kerry, who's now trying to negotiate the Iran deal. There was a consensus. And if that consensus was wrong, I think you can't blame either reporters for reporting what the consensus was or the intelligence analysts who got it wrong, though I wanted to go back and say, how did this happen? That's why I wrote the book. How did this happen? How did they get it so wrong? But you have an obligation as a reporter to do that. Right. And that's what we've stopped doing, pretty much. We have a narrative now. People lied. They lied, people died. But that's not what happened. It was worse than that. The intelligence community that is paid billions of dollars a year, 16 different agencies, totally got it wrong. And I don't know why people are more comforted by the fact that with the notion that we were lied to than that they got it wrong and they could get it wrong again.